So you know him. We're talking about KVP, MA, time, Bucky factor, and SID. We want to put all of those together, see how they're related to the exposure. Once you've mastered this, you're going to know everything you need to know about how these different technical factors are related to your x-ray exposure so that if you need to change one of these technical parameters, you will know how it will affect your exposure and how you can compensate that by changing another technical parameter. First off, we're gonna talk about the different parameters. The ones that you're typically setting on the interface are the ones that are affecting the x-ray generation, and the duration of time that those x-rays are on. So the KVP, the MA, and the time. We want to think about these all as one bucket, right? These are a set of technical parameters that are all related to one another. And we can think about that because those are the ones that we're all setting on the interface. And we have a couple other parameters that are related to the physical things that are in the room. So the SID is the source to image distance. So that's how far from our x-ray tube to our image receptor. And then the final one we have is the Bucky factor. So the Bucky factor is related to the amount of x-rays that are being blocked or attenuated after they pass through the patient, but before they get to the image receptor. And we've got videos on every one of these things separately that I'll have linked below in the description. I also want you to remember these two things are gonna to go together, the SID and the Bucky factor. We can remember they go together because they're both things that happen in the room. They also are gonna to go together as far as the relationship or the directionality when we look at the relationship between these parameters and the exposure or the intensity of X-rays that are being measured on the image receptor. Here we're just talking about how we can put it all together to get the real understanding that we need as a technologist to know how these things are affecting the exposure. And I'm not gonna ask you to just blanketly memorize a big equation. So rather we're gonna take a kind of fun way, at least I think it's fun, of building up this relationship. If you've ever read the book Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, this is a kid's classic that I particularly love with my two kids. This is written by a Wisconsin native and all the letters climb up the tree they all fall down and splat. There's just a big pile. So what would you do if your professor told you, here's a pile of letters on the ground here, or a pile of parameters in this case on the ground, and asked you a question. Let's think about these parameters. And the first question is, how important are these parameters to the exposure? And specifically what we mean is, if we change one parameter, is it gonna have a big impact or a small impact? So let's put these in order of ones that are gonna have a big impact at the top and then a smaller impact at the bottom. So from everything we've talked about so far, we know number one with a bullet is KVP, right? KVP, the exposure in X-ray imaging is exquisitely sensitive to KVP. Additionally, there's more reasons why it's important because it controls the contrast, it controls the penetration. If you have a beam, you really want to set that KVP first. Make sure you have adequate penetration because if you're not getting x-rays through, zero times 100 is still zero. So if you have a beam that's not penetrating your patient and you turn your MA up by 100 times, you're like, oh yeah, we're really going to get some through now. If you're not getting a good penetration, that's still zero. Right, so no x-rays are still making it through. So from the importance of the penetration, the contrast, and also the importance of changes in this parameter, we really know number one with the bullet, KVP is at the top. Then SID is actually our number two. SID is very important. We've talked about one over R squared. Finally, the rest of the three parameters, they all have equal importance. And we're gonna go through that now but they all are linearly related to the x-ray exposure. And we're gonna see that now. Imagine we put them back in that pile and we wanna say the exact impact. So if I make a change to these parameters, how is that gonna affect my exposure or the intensity that we have measured on the image receptor? These are approximates for some of these parameters, such as the KVP, because you can have different sizes of anatomy. But at a high level, the KVP goes like the fifth power. So 
This is why we've talked about our 15% rule in radiography. Namely, if we change the KVP by 15%, that's a factor of two. So 15% or 1.15, we raise that to the fifth power and we get two. That's where our 15% rule comes from because exposure is exquisitely sensitive to the KVP. Next, SID is actually, like we said, our second most important thing. It's actually inversely proportional to SID. So this makes sense because as we move further away, it's one over R squared. So as we move further away, they're gonna be less X-rays hitting that detector because they're gonna be spreading out. MAS, it's gonna be directly proportional to the exposure. And then finally, the Bucky factor. So remember what we talked about? These are the two things that are in the room, the Bucky factor and the SID. And the Bucky factor measures the X-rays, the fraction of X-rays that are blocked essentially, that are not making it to the image receptor. So as the Bucky factor increases, the exposure measured on the receptor decreases. So I want you to remember these two things, the Bucky factor and the SID, because we're talking about an inverse relationship for both of those. So the two things that are the physical things that are in the room, the intensity of the x-rays is inversely proportional to both of them. And for SID, it's inversely proportional to the SID squared. And for MAS, that's the easiest one because it's just directly related to the MAS. We've talked about the MA being like the flow rate of electrons, meaning the rate at which the x-rays are gonna come out. So MA and time are directly proportional to how many x-rays you're gonna have measured at the image receptor. So when we put all these things together, this is what our intensity is. So you need to be able to write that down. You need to be able to start with a blank sheet of paper. You can make flashcards if you want for each of these things separately, but you need to be able to start with a blank sheet of paper and come up with this equation. Not just look at this video, but start with a blank sheet of paper and be able to come up with this equation. Do it seven times and you'll have it committed to memory, at least for a little while. So that's important because once you can write this down, then we can solve it also for other relationships. I'm gonna go through the most important way that we wanna solve this now is when you're operating your equipment you're actually gonna be solving for the time in seconds usually. That's the thing that you're most often gonna be using as the, the final knob to dial in our exposure. So let's imagine we want to solve for the time in seconds. Imagine the case where we need to change some of our technical parameters, but we have dialed in a good radiation dose. So the exposure on the image receptor is good. We don't wanna change that. And so if we have our original set of parameters and then what we're calling our new set of parameters, we want the intensity to be the same. So we will set our initial intensity equal to our new intensity. Now, don't be intimidated because it's a lot more <laughs> variables here, but all we've done is just write that twice. I wanted to keep the letters big here, so I've got like a top and a bottom, but the things here on the top are just like the left-hand side of our equation then here's our equal sign. And then these things over here are just like the right-hand side of our equation. We're gonna go through and each of the variables, if you want to essentially cancel out a variable, right? If we wanna move it from one side to the other side. So imagine we wanna start with our KVP. So if we have KVP to the fifth power on this side, then essentially what we do is we multiply by one over KVP new to the fifth power on both sides. So what that's gonna do is essentially drag it down to the other side. So we'll do that here. So now we have KVP over KVP new to the fifth power. So for SID, we're gonna end up taking SID from the bottom on this side. It's gonna go over to the top on this side. Likewise, for the Bucky new, it's gonna go from the bottom on this side over to the top on this side. See that now we have the SID new squared and the Bucky factor new over here. Then finally, we're gonna take the MA and we're gonna bring it down over here for the MA new. So let's now consolidate this onto one line. So we have our S new, which is our new time, our S new, and we're gonna go through again, just quickly, each of the sets of parameters. 
because we can now put parentheses here. So we can do the division or the ratio first. And again, this is our 15% rule. So in general, we don't usually wanna do that taking things to the fifth power in our head. So that's why we approximate it with that 15% rule. We've got separate videos about the 15% rule. Then we have our SID, which remember the directionality is gonna be flipped here for the SID. This is second most important because this goes as the square. And then we have our Bucky factor, which has the same directionality as the SID. Those are the two things we group together because those are the physical things that are in the room. And then we have the MA, where again, the MA is the same relationship as the KVP. And finally, the original time. So this is our final equation that we could end up calculating if we want to determine for some given set of parameters, we want to change something. So if we end up moving the SID further away. So imagine we take the SID and we move the SID from 40 to 80 and we don't change anything else. So what that's going to tell us here, our new SID is 80 and our original SID is 40. 80 divided by 40 is two. And then two squared is four. So if we move the SID twice as far and don't change anything else, our time is actually going to be four times longer. So if we started with a time that was 0.25 seconds, we're now going to need a time that is one second. A change in the KVP is the same as our 15% rule. So if we leave everything else the same, just change the KVP, we want to determine what the impact is on the time. If our KVP went up by 15%, that means we can reduce the time by a factor of two. Start off with a 0.25 second acquisition, it's gonna be a 0.125 acquisition. Otherwise, for the Bucky factor, if you end up putting a grid in there which has a Bucky factor of four, and you originally had a grid with a Bucky factor of two, grid's two times more absorbing. So imagine you start out with an acquisition time of 0.25 seconds, you now need an acquisition time of 0.5 seconds. Finally, for the MA, if you started with an MA of 100 and then you went to an MA of 200, then in that case, the flow of the electrons is going to be increased. So in the same amount of time, you're going to get more X-rays. So because you have more X-rays in the same amount of time, the actual time that you have the exposure on for can go down. So if you turn up that MA by a factor of two, you can reduce the time by a factor of two. So if you start with 0.25 seconds and you turn your MA up from 100 to 200, then you're back down to 0.125 seconds. These are all direct examples that you can do. We're gonna have additional videos coming up where we actually are gonna have an online calculator for this. We're gonna be going through some examples just like that. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can see that. Also give us a like below so we can spread this rad love to more folks. Check out our video on the 15% rule if you haven't seen that one.